This is Understanding Drupal. My name is Mauricio Dinarte. I go by Dinarcon online, and that is my email if you want to reach out to me later. I am from Nicaragua, a beautiful country between 80 and 90 degrees all year round. So if you ever need to escape the cold from, you know, the north, uh, you're more than welcome here. Um, and that is a website that you can visit to actually have a virtual tour of uh, a volcano in Nicaragua. I collaborate with Agaric. We are a Boston-based company, but distributed it all over the place. Uh, uh, quick announcement, we have some upcoming trainings actually uh, in October, not July. Sorry uh, for the miss uh, dates there. I am also very passionate about Drupal and I started this website where I um, blog about you know, site building material like that, like what we're going to cover today, but also Drupal migration and, and other topics. So if you are wanting to know more about uh, general site building concepts or I evaluating, uh, you know, coming into Drupal, this is a, a great resource. Uh, so I invite you to, to visit. Um, this is an outline of what we're going to cover today, um, but let's uh, dive in. One thing that I want to mention even like stepping back from Drupal like when we think of websites it is important to understand that um, a website is not the same as a web page. Many times I have heard those terms to be used interchangeably but that is not the case. Uh, one website is a collection of multiple individual web pages. For example a newspaper can have uh, you know the front page can have the section for uh, politics for economics uh, and each individual article by itself is going to be its own page as well. So in today's uh, session, we're going to learn about how to assemble uh, pages that ultimately is going to make up your whole Drupal website. Uh, I'm talking specifically about a web page. Uh, we can identify different sections like a header, sidebars, a footer, the main content uh, region, and the idea is that at the end of this session, we are going to uh, understand, like in Drupal, what each of these elements represents. Uh, you might be wondering, you know, why Drupal in the first place? And Drupal has a lot of benefits. For example, it can scale to a lot of traffic. This is the biggest Drupal website in the world, and it serves um, about 1 billion uh, visits per month. So, you know, if uh, that, that's a lot of traffic. Uh, the gram is, is also built in Drupal. And the interesting part about this is that the night of the event, they actually uh, have a lot of content of uh, multimedia content streaming uh, at, you know, to millions of people at the same time. So not only being able to manage multimedia content, but also like to stream it uh, and I'll have a lot of people participating, you know, commenting, rating, voting uh, at the same time. Naranja Tradicional de Gandia is a, a website in Spain, a relatively a small shop. They sell oranges, tangerines, sweets, honey, mermelade, and lemons. And you know, if, if it is true that Drupal can serve high profile, high demand websites, but they can also serve your you know small business. And the same tools uh, you know are very powerful and flexible to accommodate to all of these needs. Tesla Motors uh, is also built in Drupal. The cars themselves don't run Drupal yet, but hopefully one day that will be the case. Uh, this is kind of a summary, like in addition to what I, I mentioned, like Drupal is also very secure. There is a team of about 40 people around the world that uh, you know make sure that Drupal is as secure as it can be. And if something comes up, like a vulnerability is discovered, they work diligently to, you know, um, fix the issues and announce it uh, to the community so we can apply the corresponding patches. Uh, Drupal is also very uh, friendly with translations. You can have uh, your site translated to many different contents and there are tools uh, to help you organize you know, and decide uh, what content is presented to who uh, based on different conditions. You know, you can do online business, you can Skype, uh, scale to high traffic. You can um, have a site that responds to different um, screen sizes, like the content itself uh, 
will accommodate to the screen real estate from, from the person visiting. And this is something that worked uh, out of the box starting in Drupal 8. And you can also have you know, multimedia content. So these are some of the benefits that Drupal give us. And now that we know, you know why we want to use it, like what is Drupal anyways? Drupal for the most part, and the focus of this session is a CMS. Uh, content management system and as such it allows multiple people to participate in the creation of content. This uh, allows the public the establishing a publication workflow. For example if you are working in a newspaper you can have the journalist who is who has permission on the website to create articles but the workflow dictates that before the article goes live to the to the you know to the world there, there needs to be an editor who reviews uh, and approves the, the content and this second person they only have permission to modify existing articles but they cannot create new ones because that is not their responsibility and in addition to that let's say that they should get like a final approval from the department chief and if that is the case uh, this last person they cannot add content they cannot edit content they just they just can uh, switch the publication status from unpublished to published. So what I'm trying to describe here is that Drupal is, uh, gives you granular uh, tools to, excuse me, Drupal gives you tools to have a very fine grain control uh, or on who authored the content and that, you know, you can have a, a, a simple or a complicated workflow as you want, you know, in addition to, to all of this, in the, the, when you are making changes, it is possible to tell Drupal that those changes should be uh, kept track of, like keep a history of everything that happens. And if at some point, you know, something wrong goes to the website, either by mistake or intentionally, you can instruct Drupal to uh, restore to a previous version of the content. And as I said, mentioned before, you know, the access control is not only about creating content and the workflow about creating content, but also about uh, who can see what. For example, you can have, a, you know, a Drupal site like Drupal GovCon, uh, the event itself that they have information about the different sessions that they are happening. But you might notice that the links to the Zoom room and to the YouTube uh, channel, they only appear for people who are registered. So the same piece of content, but individual pieces of information show to, uh, to different people depending on, you know, different criteria. Are they anonymous users? Are they registered users? Are they people who registered to my event? And so on. So the, the granular control is not only about creation of content, but also like once the content is created, you can limit what pieces of information each individual is going to, to see. In addition to Drupal, you know, as a content management system, it is also a framework. So if for some reason Drupal doesn't do exactly what you need out of the box, you can write some custom code to extend Drupal and match your specific business case. In addition to that, and this is probably one of the most important. Drupal is a community. It is, you know, people around the globe literally speaking thousands of, well, hundreds of languages. And it's a lot of people contributing code, contributing documentation, contributing translations, and so on. And, you know, making a community global and being able to access people like, you know, in, a, in an event like this that they can give you support. You know, this is one of the biggest strengths of the project in my opinion. Um, with that, we're going to start covering some of the, you know, basic concepts to see how Drupal assemble pages. The first one that you need to know about is Drupal core. And Drupal core is the minimum piece of software that is needed to start a Drupal project. It is a collection of modules and themes and it is the framework that you are going to build on top of if you need to extend Drupal to, you know, to meet your specific requirements. Now, if you're wondering what is a module and what is a theme, modules are responsible to add functionality to the website and themes are responsible to uh, control the appearance of the website. 
let's say that you want that every time that you create a new article, a new blog post, a tweet is going to be sent automatically or something is going to be posted to your Facebook, Facebook page, for example. Uh, that is functionality. So that is something that will be provided by a module. But let's say that for some reason you want to change the color scheme of your website or the fonts that are being used. That is the responsibility of, of the theme. So in Drupal, we have this very clear delineation between you know, who is responsible for what and um, you know, modules and themes allows to control different parts of the website. In addition to Drupal core, we also have something that is the contrib repository. And this is a collection of modules, themes, and distributions that are uh, added by community members like you and me. You know, let's say that I have a, a particular need that Drupal doesn't solve. So I do the programming, I do the coding, but I want to, you know, make it available to everyone else so they can also benefit if they have a similar a need. And, uh, you know, one of the beneficial aspects of being part of the community and contributing back your code is that now it is available for everyone else, not only to use, but also to, to improve. And that is what the contrib repository is about. Like people posting solutions to their individual problems and trying to do it in a generalized manner so that everybody can, everybody can benefit. And I haven't mentioned distributions uh, so far, but distributions are a special version of Drupal tailored to a specific need. For example, if you want to build a website for a e-commerce solution, there is a distribution for that. Uh, for a restaurant, there is a distribution for that, for a church, for a newspaper, for a government site, and so on. There is a distribution for that. And the idea of a distribution is that it is a prepackaged version of Drupal with a specific set of configurations already in place. For example, if you are building a restaurant, it might have already some settings so that you can um, indicate easily the opening hours, the, the menu, and so on. Distributions are, you know, version of Drupal thought specifically for a use case, for a business case. You know, in addition to those like uh, basic concepts, this is probably the one that you're going to hear, in the, uh, hear the most uh, when we talk about content. Uh, a note in uh, Drupal uses this word a lot. And in Drupal, a note is just a piece of information that can tell a story by itself. It's kind of an abstract uh, definition, but you know, itself that, that is uh, what a note is. Let's say that you have a car. What can you tell about the car? You can say that it is red, uh, it has two doors, it has, you know, no windows, it is, uh, you know, electric and so on. You can describe the characteristic of the cars. So that is what you can do with a node. You can take an object, uh, either tangible or intangible, and describe its properties and characteristics. So for example, for a session like this, you can describe the title, who is the speaker, the description, how many people can attend, like if it is in a physical location, how many seats uh, are available for this particular session, and so on. Um, so that is a node. It's basically a container of information. And this is an example. Uh, in a Drupal website, the node can be uh, any, any page. Uh, but something to remember is that every node has a set of common characteristics. They all have a title. They, hope, they all have a, a user who created the node. Uh, in, they all have in, a store a reference to the date and the time. They have a URL alias, uh, for example, slash blogs, slash artling views results in this case. Um, the alias is another way to reach the node. Um, the second way to reach the node is by typing your domain, slash node, slash a number. That number is just another characteristic that every node has. It is an internal identifier. And that internal identifier uh, it starts with one, two, three, and four, and so on. So any any piece of content on, on the on the website can be, you know, your domain is slash node is like 37. But because we are humans, it is easier for us to remember a phrase than a specific number, especially when they start getting very high. And that is why uh, we have these aliases uh, for the URL. And as, as you can see, you know, a notice, it can be as abstract or as concrete as you want. 
um, but the idea is that they uh, are the building blocks of uh, pages in, in our Drupal site. So we gave an example of uh, describing a car, but can we have more wheels? Can we, have, can we describe other things in our Drupal site? Yes, we can do it. For example, in, uh, we can describe cars, motorcycles, three cycles, uh, bicycles, and you know anything basically that you want. But the point is, in real life, uh, each of these objects have properties that are intrinsic to them, and that they are not shared with uh, objects of a different type. For example, the motorcycle doesn't have windows, so it doesn't make sense that when you are describing a motorcycle to include how many windows it has. Contrary, a, a car do have windows, well, some of them. And this idea is also translated into Drupal, into the content model of Drupal uh, using content types. So a content type is an abstraction that allows you to group nodes that share a similar idea or describe the same, uh, you know, excuse me, it's a group of nodes that share the similar characteristics or describe the same idea. And the purpose of a content type is to serve as a template to collect information. And once the information is collected, it is easier to manage that information. Uh, something important to understand, especially at the beginning, is the relationship between a node and a content type. Uh, a node can only be of one content type. So node one can be article, node two can be basic page, node three can be car. But one content type can host you know, one, two, three, any amount of, of nodes. So keeping that in mind, like the relationship between the, those two words uh, is important. And again, like once you have uh, this system in place, you can say, hey Drupal, I only want to list nodes of type car. I only want to list nodes of type article. I only want to list nodes of type basic pages. And that is why having this separation um, is beneficial. Let's say that you know, with this analogy of cars in the real life, you have a, a business that sell uh, used cars and a client comes, a potential client comes looking for a red Toyota Yaris from 2010. In, in the website, you now have a mechanism to say, Drupal, I want to give me all the nodes that are of type car. So you will get something like this, you know, all the cars. But then the client is looking for something specific. You know, they are looking for the year, the make, the model, and so on. They might have other criteria to look for as well. So uh, this is where fields come into place. And fields are awesome. Why? We're going to see now. Um, maybe uh, some of us have used Facebook or Twitter. And if you are familiar with these social networks, they allow you to you know, write whatever you, you want to put your thoughts uh, in written form. And some of them even, they allow you to add images or text or audio or something else. But the point is that the box that they give you is a white canvas where you can put anything that you want. And sometimes that backfires, but you know that is the reality. The point being, this is something that is called free text. And when you have free text, that is not easily searchable. Imagine that you know this business has a Twitter page or a Facebook page, and this client comes looking for something. If they are forced to use the search feature between you know look, looking among a thousand posts, it's going to be really hard because there is no structure to the content itself. You know, people can write whatever they want, and in general, free text is not easily searchable. Also, when you have free text, you can have inconsistent, inconsistent data. Let's say that uh, you want to specify a date. You can say November 19, 2015. Uh, or you can, instead of have, having the month fully spelled out, you have an abbreviation. Or instead of using letters for the, for the month, you use a number. For the year, you might use a two or four year format. For the separator of the, of the parts, you can use a slash or a dash. Or for example, if you are from Nicaragua, like myself, we put the day before the month. So if you have a, a, an open text field, people can enter data in so many ways, and that uh, is difficult to, to find. 
also you can enter in invalid data. For example, how old are you? I am minus 10 years, minus 10 years old. When is your birthday? February 31st, 2020. What is the price of this item? 1.5 uh, euros, but the dollar is, the symbol is from the US dollar. Uh, email, not a real email. You are missing an ad, an ad sign. What is your phone number? Hi, I'm beautiful, happy face. There's not even a number there. The point here is that when you have free text, when you have inconsistent data, when you have uh, invalid data, Drupal just wants to cry because after the fact, when visitors to the website try to look for content, it is going to be really, really, really hard to find. So what is the solution for all of these problems? Um, the solution is fields. Uh, and we're going to give a different description of fields so we can understand why are they beneficial. For one, fields can enforce validation. You can say that a piece of content is required or not. For example, uh, a card cannot go on the website if there is no image associated with it. An event cannot go published without a date, for example. In addition to having you no know, validation based on requirement or not requirement, you can also, depending on the type of field, you can have contextual validation. For example, if you have a number, you can say um, it cannot be less than zero, for example. You know, event can be free, but I am not going to pay you to come to my event. So the minimum value that can be entered in the price is going to be zero. And we are going to include a prefix and a suffix around the input element so that people are clear that we are supposed to be entering US dollars and not a different currency. If you are uploading images, you can specify and restrict which formats are available. You can specify what dimensions need to be matched or the maximum uh, size of the image itself. You can also enforce that all images on the, on the site have an alt attribute that is used for accessibility purpose. So, you know, you can do, you can do that at a field level. And when you start doing this, um, Drupal becomes to be happy. And if you really want to make Drupal love you, this is the, the recipe. You have one field per piece of data that you want to store. In our uh, or example about a car, that would be one field for the year, for the make, for the model, for the color, and, and, and so on. And in addition to having one field uh, per type of data, you also need to select the right uh, type integer, decimal, image, phone, um, email, URL, and so on. Because as we saw before, selecting the proper type of field allow us to define the proper validation criteria. And the other benefit with fields is that they allow you to collect data in many different ways. Let's say that we have a, a physical event, something that is not happening very often lately, but let's, for the sake of the example, think that we, we need to uh, ask for, for a physical address, you can say, you know, have a, a, a regular text field and let people enter the address. Or, you know, let people enter the latitude and longitude if they for some reason know that out of, you know, out of pocket. Um, you also might uh, have a, a map show on the website and ask people to click on the map so a pointer is, uh, is there indicating the location. And you might have a, fil uh, a file upload uh, widget, and you know, it's similar to PDF document, Excel document, and so on. There are specific uh, file formats that allow you to store geographical information. So you can have that, that as an option, like upload a KML file uh, that is going to collect the data for, for me. So for one, the field will allow you to collect the data in different ways, but also, once the information is collected, they allow you to show the same data in a different format. So maybe you collected an address in text version, but when you present it, you present it in a map. So again, this is something that fields give you the flexibility. And for the record, in Drupal, there is no one individual field uh, for addresses that will give you these four options, but it is theoric, theoric it is possible in theory, and if you combine different modules, you can achieve a functionality just like what I described. In addition to that, 
once the information has been stored on the Drupal site, you can aggregate the data and present it in a you know unified form. And this is a, a, a Drupal website called Drupal that shows events happening all over the place. Uh, and one interesting part of this website is that not only you are able to plot the different event locations, but also you can color code them based on field data. For example, you can have in your event two fields, one for the address and one for the event type. And you can combine the data from both to show a color-coded map uh, of with different themes. And the last part that I want to mention about fields is that you can show or hide them individually. So, you know, basically you can cherry pick what data you want to present to your users at a field level, like from, you know, something, some content type collects 10 fields. I just want to show three to the general users. I want to show five to the people who have an account. I want to show seven to the people who have a premium account. And I want to show everything to my site administrators, for example. And you can do that on, on a field per field basis. And this is an example of uh, fields in Drupal. The one at the top uh, is a regular text field. We have an image, we have a date uh, for the year where it says established in. That is actually a, a number field, but it has a prefix. But why do we want to make it a number? Because we might have some restriction in place. For example, we only want to collect information about organizations that were established in 2000 or onwards. So uh, having that number field will allow us to have that restriction in place. We can also have dates uh, with time or without time. We can have phone numbers, email address. We can have a long text field with uh, rich content like HTML tags and so on. And then the very bottom on the right, we have taxonomy terms that we're going to mention uh, in a moment. So all of these, it's why fields are awesome. They allow you to have a structured content um, and once the information is collected on a site, you can um, you know, modify, filter out based on the individual uh, fields. And what we have covered so far is the building block of you know, the main content of the website. Uh, you can have a node that is of type uh, news article, and that news article has an image, has a text, has tax tax taxonomy, and so on. So those three uh, concepts in Drupal, for the most part, are going to talk about the main content of the website. But what about everything else? Er any other part surrounding the, the center of, 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 the, of this image? Uh, let's talk about those as well. Uh, blogs. So blogs are container of extra information to display along the main content of your website. And they are placed in a theme region. So what is a theme region anyway? When you install Drupal, um, it will come by default with a, with a theme. And that theme is going to have uh, like boxes or placeholders where you can put content, maybe a header, a footer, a sidebar, and so on. So those uh, placeholders for content that are provided by the theme, that is where you can put blocks. And, and once you have found a place where you want to put them, you know, the blocks themselves have different characteristics. For example, they can be static or dynamic. A static content uh, will be a blog that, you know, shows the same information every time or almost every time. For example, a copyright text at the bottom of, of your website, that is going to change very likely once a year. Or if you have an event like this one that have sponsors, you know, throughout the course of the whole event, you want to show the banners for the sponsors in every page of, on the website. And the specific banner is going to be the same. Uh, in, an example of dynamic content can be, you know, the latest blog post. If you have a, a page that shows your five latest articles, you know, if you publish one article every day, that is going to be changing daily. If you pu publish an article every week, that is going to be changing weekly. If you publish an, an article every hour, that is going to be changing many times in a single day. And 
you can configure Drupal to do that automatically for you. So you don't have to, you know, go every hour, every minute, every, every week to make the change uh, for you. Blocks can also enforce visibility rules. For example, if you have uh, an article on the website, uh, you can have a block that says more articles written by the same person. But more articles written by the same person only makes sense when you have an article in the first place. If you are seeing information about, a, about an event, it doesn't make sense to have more articles by the same event. So because of that, you can have different criteria to determine when a, a particular block is going to be shown or not. Part of that uh, criteria can be per, by per content type, per language. For example, some things might be useful in the English version of the site. Others might be useful in the Spanish version of the site. You can also do it by uh, pages. And this refers to like URL or URL patterns. For example, in the front page, in the contact page, in the articles page, and so on. You can also do it by roles, like everyone authenticated users, administrators, editors, and so on. Blogs can also be aware of their environment and change the content that it is displayed according to that environment. For example, what I mentioned before, more articles from the same author, the blog itself is going to see, okay, who created this piece of content and I'm going to load more, more posts by the same person. Another example, in, uh, in the car dealership uh, business, uh, more articles on sale in the same city, for example. I, assuming that our business serves, you know, different cities uh, ac across the country. And one of the very nice things about Drupal is that once you learn something, that is very likely be useful for, for something else. In particular, I just gave a description of fields and how they apply to nodes. Well, everything that I mentioned about fields, they also apply to blocks. So you can attach fields to blocks and you know you can combine the powers of uh, block visibility rules with the flexibility of uh, field for content entering. For instance, you can have a special offer block that is going to show uh, a promotion on your website, let's say on the right sidebar, every time until the expiration date that is defined in one of the fields uh, happens. After that date, the blog is going to automatically disappear. Um, we also have uh, views. This is probably one of the biggest uh, assets of Drupal. And definitely we could spend the whole time talking about this because they are super powerful and super flexible. But I'm going to try to resume what a view is in two slides. First, a view is a listing of information. Any, anything that you can store in Drupal, notes, user, comments, taxonomy, terms, files, anything like that can be displayed as a list uh, using a view. And what is the job of a view? We are going to scan the content of your website uh, following the criteria that you define. And once it finds all the uh, pieces of content that match that criteria, they give you the flexibility to present it in different ways. It can be an HTML table, an RSS feed, a PDF document, a CD CDS document, an interactive map, an image slideshow, a JSON representation. You know, the same piece of content, you can display it in all these formats if you want. And this is an example, you know, piggybacking on the uh, cars example before. Let's say that we have a content type, cars, and we have four nodes of that type, you know, each of them representing one individual car in real life. We have different fields like the plate, the year, the make, the model, the photo, the color, the transmission, the type of fuel. So um, in addition to having all those fields, when you have a view, you can combine many fields in one presentation. For example, we have one column that says ID, and we are showing that column four different fields, year, make, model, and the plate. It doesn't mean that internally it is put together. It's just like because we have them in separate location, in separate fields, when we assemble the view, we can mix and match as needed. Something else 
uh, is that views can have a feature called exposed filters. The thing that you see uh, at the above, like the form controls, where you can filter by year, by make, the, by model, uh, that is another benefit of using fields because you have that information separate, then you know you can not only show a listing of that content, but also allow the end user, the visitor of the website to filter uh, based on the criteria that they want. And the criteria, each, each field can be set as a filter criteria, for example. And when you apply a filter like this, the structure, the structure of the table is going to remain the same. Uh, what, what is going to happen is, is the content is going to be filtered. And as you can see, a view can occupy, occupy the main content of the page, like the center, but also a view can occupy uh, a block. And th this is, might be a little bit confusing. Again, we are mixing different concepts together, but um, the top left uh, section, that is a block, and the block itself was created using a view. And what we're seeing there uh, is a listing of only one element. And when I hear the word listing, I usually think of, you know, two, three, four, you know, more than one usually. But in this case, we're only seeing one. In this case, this view was configured to show one random car. So that is another use case for a view. If you want to show one thing at random or two or three things at random, you can create a view and configure it to, to have that behavior. So, why so much theory? Why do we need to learn all these concepts to, to be able to use a Drupal site in the first place? The reason is that Drupal loves nesting. Uh, and one of the things that Drupal loves to nest is the different concepts that you have. So in order to be able to not only assemble a website, but also know where to go when you want to make a modification is that you need to know what piece of, uh, element or what piece of the puzzle are you dealing with? And this is probably the most important slide in the whole presentation uh, because this is where you learn how everything is combined. Let's say that you want to show more articles uh, from the same author in the right sidebar. So that uh, piece of content is going to be at least five different concepts. For one, you have the theme region. The theme region determines where the content is going to appear. In this case, the right sidebar. Then you have the blog itself, you know, more articles by the same author. The blog was created using a view because we are showing a listing of content. So to benefit uh, from the features that Drupal provides, we used a view to create a listing. Then each of those uh, elements that we are showing is a node. So you have a view that is comprised by several nodes. And for each of those nodes, you might show the title, the author, the publication date, you know, a short summary. So you are going to be displaying different fields of those individual nodes. So it might seem, you know, relatively simple uh, to have more articles from the same author on my sidebar but internally Drupal is working at different levels to produce that piece of content. And uh, why do you need to know um, with which piece of content it is? Let's say that you want to change how many elements are rendered. Instead of showing five, I only want to show three. That is something that is going to conf be configured at the view level. If let's say that I no longer want to show the content on the right sidebar, I want to show it on the left sidebar, then you will have to make that change at the block level and so on. The point is that at any point, you are going to be interacting with different concepts in Drupal and understanding what each of them is um, will allow you to make the specific changes that you need. Mauricio, I just want to give you a heads up. You have about five more minutes. Okay, uh, so I just want to uh, show this slide and then I will open it up for questions. Uh, so uh, what I mentioned before, now we have a full picture of what a Drupal page is. We have the main content in the middle uh, that can be a node or that can in some occasions be a view but also we have everything around it. Everything around it is going to be a block. 
And those blocks can be assembled in different ways. As I said before, they can be created using a view or it can be a custom block that the user just enter a specific content or you can show you know, different fields in those blocks. So the idea is that uh, you know the concepts and you know how they relate to each other. And with that information, you are able to assemble uh, different uh, pages on a Drupal website. And with that, I would like to open it up for questions. Um, I am seeing a question in the chat. Will you reuse a field between content types, for example, a date field, or have a separate field uh, for each content type? It is possible and many times recommended to reuse field across content types. Um, there are, you know, a few things that you need to take into account. Fields can have um, configuration that apply to all of them. So if you, like in every uh, part of your website, you want to show the, the dates in the same format, uh, for example, then you can reuse it. But if you, if you need to show the dates in different formats, uh, or for example, in one particular case, you, you want to save the date, and in another particular case, you want to save the date and the time, then that is a different setting. So in that case, you will have to store, you know, you, have to, you will have to create two different fields. There are a couple of other implications at the database level, for, but for the most part, you know, uh, an end user only needs to care about if the configuration is going to be shared across different content types. And if that is the case, it is perfectly fine to reuse the same field. Will the slides be available for download? Yes, uh, I'm going to sh share it in, you know, with the team and Twitter and uh, yeah, it will be available. I will okay, and I, back. Yeah, and Mauricio, I also um, tagged you in the site building Drupal Slack channel. You can either upload them there and you can also upload them to your session. Yes. I think there are no more questions, at least, at least in the in the chat, and, and the slides are going to be available. I'm going to put them right after the session. Any more questions? Thank you so much. Well. Thanks everyone uh, for joining us today and enjoy the rest of the camp.